more lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. I'm your regular Wednesday evening host here at Body Bags. It is week 439, and we are one week away from theme week, which will be Video Nasties Volume 2. Uh, the lineup already looks fantastic. It is going to be a fun week. But this week is a fun week because it's just random week. But all of us are doing something pretty cool. And I am doing a little bit of nostalgia today for my own personal life. 1988, uh, a Tony Randall film. It is, of course, the sequel to Hellraiser. Hellbound Hellraiser Part 2. Uh, nostalgia for me because, man, th this this movie comes at a point in my life when it seemed like everything was bigger than life. Um, you know, you know, between 86, 87, 88, I mean, you got, I mean, just a plethora of sequels. And I mean, over the top sequels between the ad campaigns, the posters, the TV spots, the trailers, uh, everything just was like man, over, or just over, not just over the top in a negative way, but, like, bigger than life, like, I mean, of course, you got Hellbound, right, you got Phantasm 2, I mean, this summer, the ball is back, uh, you mean, the poster campaign, everything was freaking awesome with that, uh, you know, uh, what else, I mean, we got, uh, we got Evil Dead 2, I mean, I mean, who doesn't remember, well, I guess, if you're my area, my age, uh, you know, you don't forget those days of renting VHS tapes um, and things like Evil Dead 2, right? Um, and then, of course, you got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. You've got uh, Halloween 4. You've got, uh, uh, you know, the return of Michael Myers, you know, uh, sort of post that uh, sort of weird entry, uh, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which I freaking love. I've seen it on the big screen. Uh, that movie, I freaking love that movie, but I get it, Michael's gone, people love it, but it's, it's that, man, it's that ad campaign, right, uh, to feed off a nostalgia, right, uh, and then, uh, I was thinking, uh, Friday the 13th Part 7, uh, a lot, most of these movies I saw in the theater as a kid, I mean, and it, that was the heyday of horror for me, man, it was either you're renting it or you're going to the theater, and how awesome was that, seemingly almost every other summer, man, getting an ad blitz for the latest Friday, the latest Halloween, the latest whatever, um, and so this movie, this entry, Hellbound, you know, does the same, the score is operatic, man, it's just, uh, uh you know, it takes you down into the bowels of hell itself. Uh, it picks right up, you know, uh, it picks right up, of course, with uh, the conclusion of the first part uh, and then moves, you know, the story further, but more of a fantasy, um, dark um, horror fantasy, which is brilliant because it sets itself apart from the first film and of course tony randall comes in as director now he he's uncredited but he he had some work uh as director i think there were three guys involved two credited i think and tony randall but defcon 4 i remember that uh renting that vhs that apocalyptic film um and of course he'll go on to do like ticks and um um i can't remember I, I, there's not a whole lot there um yeah, but um, Tony Randall. Um, so Clyde Barker, I can't remember the exact reason or the nature of why he had to step back, but uh, as he steps back, Tony Randall uh, is uh, the lucky uh, guy who steps in and I thought did a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant job. Um, now this is the Arrow release. I did not get the Scarlet box. I got the next best thing, which was the trilogy box set that they put out. And... Uh, that thing's awesome, man. How is that not awesome? If you can't, if you can't get the big thing, uh, the slim down, I, I remember going into Walmart. I had missed that big, beautiful Halloween box that had come out by uh, Screen Factory. But then uh, I remember uh, Walmart put down that beautiful slim down version uh, for like 30, almost 40 bucks. And, uh, you know, so that's, you know, my, that's my box. Um, but this is beautiful, man. This is beautiful. I mean, you got all the movies in there, of course, or all the three, right? And um, and it's a great. I mean, you can see the extras up on a screen. Uh, it is an Arrow release, so I mean, you know, you, you just come to expect 
you got your commentaries and I want to speak to that too real quick. Uh, the commentary track with Tony Randall and uh, Peter Atkins, the screenwriter. Um, it, it's it's not, I'm just going to be honest, it's not the best commentary I've ever heard. There's a lot of rabbit trailing and, and uh, not like sticking right to it. But the moments that they do sort of start focusing on the film at hand, uh, they do get into some engaging conversations. Only one I'll, I'll point to the nature of uh, hell that is on display here in this film. There was a question about uh, Andrew, is Andrew Robinson, who, uh, of course, was uh, Kirstie's dad in the first film, right? I I'm just sort of speaking as though most of y'all have all seen this. Uh, he was script, he was written into the script for Hellbound, uh, but once he had read it and realized how small his part was, he ultimately decided against. Now, this made Peter Atkins, the screenwriter, very happy. It made Tony Randall, the director, not so happy uh, because he really wanted to work with him. It made Peter Atkins happy simply because he couldn't get his mind wrapped around this idea of, well, why is Kirstie's dad even in hell? He shouldn't be there. He didn't do anything to deserve to be there. Um, and they get into this conversation about this. And Tony says, well, you know, you got to remember, we're not speaking to the biblical idea of hell. We are talking as something other dimensional. Uh, maybe Lovecrafting in the sense, maybe it is Clive's, it is Clive Barker's creation um but it almost serves more of a other dimensional type place it's still a hell place um hence the name right um and, what, and that's what peter says he says well i mean be it a biblical concept of or a construct of hell um all the bad people are still there right <laughs> and so they you know tony kind of laughs about it and and but Peter, I mean, Peter makes a good point. I mean, and it's interesting that they have these conversations uh, like this. It reminds me of uh, listening to uh, Dardano Sacchetti's uh, com or interview track, I think, interview, uh, I think on the Gates of Hell or City of the Living Dead. Um, and he mentions in one of these interviews that uh, one of the inspirations for that movie was the Book of Revelation, which I thought is so, I mean, it just begs, one never knows completely the conversations or inspirations, the things that happen behind closed doors as things are being developed and made ready for ultimately what will be, you know, the the, the cinematic approach to the source material. And so I thought it was just an interesting conversation that, you know, you, that you care about Christie's dad and, you know, and you can't think of why he would be there. Um, and so bottom line is once he decided he didn't want to be in the project, that made Peter pretty happy to see. He just wrote him out. And, but that, you know, that leads into, you know, some interesting things, you know, Christy sort of being suckered into thinking her dad is there, which I'm sort of wondering, why does she think her dad's in hell? Uh, anyways, it's, you know, things. It's interesting. Um, we are talking about Hellbound, right? And I'm speaking as though you've all seen this movie. If you've never seen it, man, you really, this movie, God, it's one of those rare movies that just takes what the original did and brought and just builds upon it in huge operatic ways, if, if I can use that as a word or so. Um, with the score of Christopher Young, uh, you're hearing it right now in part, and that ought to, you ought to know, or, you know, you ought to be thinking, I've heard that somewhere else, and you have Spider-Man 2. He worked in the sound department for Spider-Man 2, but he was the composer for Spider-Man 3 under Sam Raimi, which, get ready, Doctor Strange, multi-universe of madness, right? Um, and so, you know, that's funny how, you know, scores can overlap and find, you know, application and other, other stories. Um, the, uh, uh, I mean, I think the one thing I wanted is uh, Dr. Chenard, um, Kenneth um, Cranham, um, who is just a brilliant, he, he, he might be the most fun to watch in this. Of course, basically what you have here is, first one ends, Christie's in the insane asylum where Dr. Chenard worked. Actually, he's actually founded this insane asylum. And, um, but he's also an occultist and, and he is uh, very obsessed with the boxes, the puzzles. And so he, he's been in search of this and, uh, so his character is very pivotal uh, in terms of getting these characters back into the world of Pinhead uh, and the other Cenobites. 
In fact, Trenard himself will become a Cenobite. And there's, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, backdrop, some backdrop to the Cenobites, to Pinhead and the Chatterer and um, yeah, the other two there, uh, Butterball and uh, I can't think of the girl's name there, the Lady Cenobite, um, which is some interesting and used very interestingly towards the end of the film. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so... It's so nostalgic for me, man. It brings back so many good memories of just seeing these things in the theater, the posters, just the poster concept artwork, um, you know, laid out in the pages of Fangoria, Gore Zone. Um, it, it just, you know, the, the 80s were, and I always forget that the 80s did not go out with a whimper. They went out with a bang. And you had some of the biggest movies we often attribute to the 80s we're at the tail end of the 80s, but that whole decade, man, was, it's got to be, I mean, it, it's it's got to be the mother of all decades as far as horror, man. And, you know, in terms of special effects, I mean, come on, nothing, nothing, I don't think compares to the thing, nothing. Um, yeah, so, you know, Hellbound, uh, so they all go back into hell, and then the story, you know, really revolves around Kirsty the young girl um played by Tip, uh played by uh Imogen Borman I think uh plays Tiffany uh she's a mute uh she's there because she uh witnessed uh her mom uh being killed and so she's got a lot of some issues going on and and so these are some of the uh, ensemble characters that will come in Claire Higgins reprises her role as evil wicked Julia um and you know so I mean it's 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 course brad doug bradley's back um which is awesome because the first time when bradley makes his grand entrance it is a grand entrance man and some of the communicate or the, the conversation that happens between the cenobites and kirstie is great too like you know come on now uh you're here again and now you got some other excuse why we can't you know delve into your flesh um and, and just the map paintings the world that is created uh, the labyrinth of uh, this place, uh, this hell, this Clyde Barker created place, right? Um, it, it's just so much of it is just so, such an, a spectacle to, to watch and a spectacle to listen to. The special effects, man, just on par with 80 special effects, really good stuff. Um, I, I mean, it's, 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 I know I didn't get specific into the story itself um really sort of that's kind of what happens um it's just executed brilliantly i i don't know what clive would have done had he directed this movie but i thought oh i thought tony randall did a superb job um yeah so hellraiser hellraiser hellbound hellraiser 2 tony randall film from 1988 uh the reason i did this uh well it was on my mind and I noticed it never been done in the history of body bags. Go figure. Next week, Video Nasties Volume 2. I'll actually be getting into the Video Nasties uh, documentary set that had come out. Uh, and that's sort of what I'm going to lean towards. But uh, the films that week are promising, man. It promises to be just another great, great, great theme week. So as we head towards the end of this month and summer is upon us, I know the world seems crazy, out of control. Um, all, all we can do is wake up every morning and go about our day the best we can. And so part of that for me is film. I love film. And it just it carries me away, man, even if it's just for a little bit of time. This is one of those great films that does that. And uh, I didn't really get into all the special features, but it's up there for you to look at. There's some good stuff on there, man. Some really good stuff. But anyways, let me just go ahead and just say thank you, thank you, thank you for all your support and all you mean to us as a channel, as reviewers. Thank you. Anyways, let's end here. Go Bills. This is not a dream.